Behind the camera there is a sofa, which means that wall here would make a perfect location for a TV. As you can see, I don't have a TV. Hey guys, at this point I don't even watch daytime TV anymore. The last time I remember I watched something on the TV, it was uh, probably Launch of the Planet Earth 2, a show that I really liked and I was really looking forward to, but that was ages ago and... Frankly speaking, within a month or two, it was on Blu-ray anyway, so yeah, I don't have a TV and I don't even play games anymore, that's, that's one of the reasons that... Well, the TV is just not needed. What I do have is a projector in my bedroom because, well, who doesn't want to have a cinema in the bedroom? And it's totally worth all those breadcrumbs that's going to end up in your bed sheets anyway. But the good news is you don't have to spend much money nowadays. All you have to do is just go on Amazon, type in budget projector and... You are littered with all the choices that advertise budget projection with 1080p resolution, which don't even have a 1080p resolution. Today, today I have got something that definitely has 1080p resolution, and it comes with 700 ANSI lumens, which stands for bright. So uh, let's check out Nexigo PJ40 projector. So without further ado, let's dive inside. Right, what we get is a bag of goodies and the projector itself. So what's in a bag of goodies? Two batteries for the remote control, as the remote control, use a manual, that's all of them. Now that's a filter, and projector, cloth, and the splitter. Ta-da! It looks, it looks decent. Where is it? Is that handle? Oh no, this is a filter. The promised I.O. at the back includes the RJ, two USB ports, which look like two USB 2.0 ports, two HDMI, and audio video infrared at the back, and headphones. Okay, now that we know what's what, I think it's time to plug in, play some movies, play some games, figure out what I can do with it, and let me know what they can have it. The asking price for this is $279 and 99 cents, which puts it in a really budget bracket. But is it any good? On paper, it looks splendid, honestly it does. But previously I reviewed one of the budget projectors in that video and it left me wanting a bit more. This is a LCD projector with a 1080p native resolution in terms of projection that comes with Pretty good connectivity. You can connect Wi-Fi both in 2.4 and 5 GHz bandwidth, but if you don't want to do it wirelessly, there is an Ethernet port, so RJ45, just plug it in and you are connected. Now two USB ports, which you can use to load the content on and just start playing content locally if that's what you're into, and two HDMI ports, which you know what they are for, for the traditional way of using projectors like this. On top of that, you also have Bluetooth if you want to connect this to Bluetooth devices. There's a headphone jack and audio video jack. And infrared remote, which is quite useful, especially that the unit has two infrared sensors, one at the front, one at the back. So whatever orientation you're going to use it, you can always control that unit. That's nice. So it's a budget projector at heart, which means they probably cut some corners. And there are a couple of things that I, well, didn't like. First of all, it's a silly thing. Those are rubber pads at the bottom. They are easily unstickable. <laughs> which means you can remove them accidentally and lose their rubber feet. Get yourself a super glue, get that fixed, and it won't bother you again. And while we're looking at the feet, this one is removable to allow you to adjust the angle. And once removed, then obviously you'll be able to put the projector on the tripod. So yeah, it's nice to have this option. Another thing I didn't like, you have those controls that you can use to access pretty much everything you need for this projector, which is nice. However, the buttons are, well, they require sometimes one, two or three when presses to register something, which is annoying. Thankfully, the supplied infrared remote, it's nice, it works great, so I'm not touching these buttons very often. Yay! Lastly, the supplied cable is quite short, 
and uh, I'll tell you what to do with this cable as well in a moment. When I connected this projector for the first time, one of the things I've noticed was a very familiar loading menu. I've seen this somewhere before. Yes, because this is running Android 9 inside, and even though it has Android inside, it's not one of those smart projectors. I mean, not in the typical sense. You can't open Google Play Store and install any apps. You can't even sideload the apps, which is disappointing. But there are a couple of smart features that this projector kind of offers to you. You can sign into a YouTube app in the same way you would sign into one of those YouTube TV apps and stream YouTube directly to the projector. As long as the projector is connected to the internet, you can just watch YouTube straight away. Super handy, actually. However, uh, for me, the YouTube shortcut didn't work at first until I factory resetted the projector. So if you have any problems with it, just give it a factory reset and you should be good to go. Another thing is when I was browsing files using the included file browser. This file browser is obviously there, so you could browse your USB storage uh, and play the most common media formats. It supports the video playback up to 4K, you can play music, you can display pictures and even documents. But what is really, really cool is the ability to access network storage. And I have a network storage from Argon Eon. There's a video uh, about that, how to build your own NAS on a cheap. And, well, I ran into some problems. No matter how I configured my Samba, I could not make it be seen by the projector itself. Which is strange, because as soon as I created a network share on my Windows computer, that device was instantly available, so the network feature seems to be working fine. Now, there is no extra advanced options. I can't input IP for my server, etc. That would probably help. So I'm not 100% sure what I'm doing wrong. I can access all the shares using other devices, just not this projector. I hope that's something that will change with a firmware update, so we're gonna get a more advanced option of configuring this because having access directly to your network storage would be ideal. And speaking of other options, there is a DLNA feature which really got me excited because I have Plex with DLNA server. So I thought, well, if the NAS drive storage doesn't work, I could work with that. However, once I've opened this, I've discovered that it just have instructions on how to use AirPlay to share your screen via DLNA. I didn't even know this is possible because in my mind DLNA was mainly used to stream media content from one server to the client devices. But that's clearly not the case and, well, maybe they should name it a little bit better. While we're speaking about sharing screens, there is a Miracast and Airplane solution, so you could share your screen from phones or connect to the projector using wireless display option. And here is the thing, it works, it's been detected nicely and I can connect from my Windows computer or share the screen from Android. However, whenever I'm trying to play any video, I run into buffering problem and I'm not 100% sure whether it's a projector's fault, to be honest, because I've experienced that in the past. And no matter what I've done in my network, whether I've connected it via Wi-Fi or used a hardware connection, I still was getting this. So there might be some configuration problem with my network. I'm not going to hold it against this projector. That's pretty much all from smart features. So let's talk about the actual projection. Well, I mentioned it has 700 ANSI lumens, which is, well, bright. It's almost twice as bright as the projector I'm currently using from Xiaomi. Uh, if you want to know which projection I'm using, it's uh, in a corner that I reviewed for you. Now, this means that I should be able to watch it in a daylight. Now, bear in mind, for the last two weeks, there was nothing but the rain outside and I'm constantly facing overcast in UK, so I hadn't had the opportunity to test this unit in a broad, direct, dead sunlight, but I gave it a go on a brighter days and actually it was performing really nicely unlike my other projector. I have no doubt you'll be able to enjoy yourself during the daytime without sacrificing much from the picture quality. I know this might not come across very well on my camera and uh, image recorded looks slightly washed out but you have to take my word for it. It was actually a pleasant experience. But there is a small trade-off that you need to be aware of. In settings, you'll find options for fan that allows you to set the fan loudness from 1 to 10. 1 being whisper quiet and 10 being, well, a hoover, let's put it that way.
and that is directly linked to the maximum brightness of the projector. This is actually a good thing, at least in my opinion, because if I want to use this projector in a more intimate setting, in a bedroom at night, I can set it to be whisper quiet and still enjoy a really nice image because of the lack of sun in a bedroom at night. But the moment I want to do a daytime projection, then I, have to, I can crank up the fun settings and the brightness and still have adequate picture quality um, at the expense of extra noise. Now, in my testing, I found out that 4 to 5 fan level is enough to actually enjoy the projection in a daylight, so I was quite happy with this. So before you start watching movies, there's a couple of things that you need to do. First, there is no autofocus. There is a nice little compartment in here that allows you to set the focus of the device, and that's the first thing that you'll have to do. It's not a massive issue. Most of those projectors are going to be fixed somewhere and not being moved very often. Besides, to set this um, focus, it takes only a couple of seconds, so that's fine. I have absolutely no problem with that. Uh, but the projector itself also comes with the automatic keystone correction in both vertical and horizontal spacing. That is nice, and uh, it does okay job out of the box, but if you want fine adjustment, then you can switch over to 4D mode in which you can adjust every corner of the projection uh, to make it a perfect square um, for your viewing pleasures. Just bear in mind that adjusting the shape of the projection will limit the maximum size of your projection. Now, this projection, this projector, and speaking of projection, this projector shoots straight, which means it doesn't angle uh, your projection in any way. The image casted from that projector is basically keeps the projector in the center and uh, it spans in equal um, distance on each side. So bear that in mind when actually considering positioning that unit. Now, this is not a short throw projector either. The minimum distance is around 1.7 meter to get the focus working and you are expected to get around 35 inch uh, projection size, which isn't big. Now, thankfully, that increases significantly, and when I put it in my primary application in the bedroom, I was able to get 85-inch screen from 3.5 meters. So, that was quite decent, especially that this is a 1080p projection, and uh, if you walk closer to the um, projection wall, you actually will be able to see some pixels. Now, one of the things I've mentioned earlier about the cable being too short, it is too short to begin with, but get like a 90 degree angle adapter on Amazon or something because uh, the projector itself is quite big uh, lengthwise. So if you're planning to put one on the shelf, you'll take all the shelf space and more because the cable is going to be sticking out straight to the back and it's not really bendable. So get one of those 90 degree adapters and you will save a couple of uh, centimeters on that shelf for, well, for positioning correctly. After watching a couple of movies, I have to say that I'm super pleased with it. The projector definitely delivers. It's perhaps thanks to those extra lumens in which the color reproduction is fine, even when it comes to dark colors, something I complained about on the previous budget projector I've reviewed. And uh, the clarity of the picture is nice too. I was able to use that to cast a secondary display for my laptop and uh, actually just write an article on it and that was well, surprising, because I did that during the daytime and I had absolutely no problems with it. So whether you're watching stuff at night, uh, which is probably preferred way of uh, consuming the content this way, or during the daytime, which is definitely enjoyable, uh, you should be quite happy with it. And since the projector was already hooked up via HDMI to my computer, I decided to play some games and figure out, is this something that you can game on? And the short answer is uh, probably not. There is a latency between uh, what's displayed on the computer and what's displayed on the projector, and that's around, uh, I say, 250 to 300 milliseconds, which is enough to put you at the disadvantage when uh, playing Twitch games or trying to aim or playing competitively against uh, human players. So I gave it a go in a Spider-Man, and I had absolutely no problem progressing through the missions and defeating enemies. That was to be expected, because it's not the latency that would really, really matter that much. But as soon as I switched over to Counter-Strike Go, then playing against bots was okay, but I could tell that my aim, it's not what it used to be. So I would not recommend playing against human players because they're gonna own you. 
But if you just want to play something like Kerbal Space Program and watch rockets explode in a massive screen in front of you, yeah, I can see you using it and enjoying yourself because it wouldn't matter. So yes to casual gaming, no to anything else. So one more thing I didn't cover, which is audio. Since we've got 20 watts of speakers included inside, uh, both on the both sides of a projector, let's talk about them. Obviously, using built-in speakers will be impacted by how loud you've got your fans to be. Obviously, for the best quality, you want to set the fan noise to be as little as possible. Now, the built-in speakers are surprisingly good. I mean, it didn't make me run to connect something externally so I could enjoy the uh, projected content, but uh, I have to be honest and say that the lower frequency or bass, it's, it's, it's just not there. <laughs> It's just not there. It's not the speakers that is capable of doing that. So if you're hoping for out-of-the-box cinematic experience, oh, yes, you can watch a movie or two, but down the line, you'll be probably wanting to upgrade your sound system. And if you're looking to uh, get something decent without spending too much money, check out this video in which I uh, showed you what you can do with majority audio and other elite boards in terms of multi-room uh, audio setup. So, in general, the speakers are passable, but at some point you're probably going to uh, connect something more beefy to it. And speaking of quirky things, you can actually use this project as a Bluetooth speaker. I'm not 100% sure why the option is there, because thanks to the fans I probably would never do that, but the option is there. Regardless of the shortcomings, at $280-ish, this is a really decent choice especially that it offers a really nice projection with a good brightness and a couple of smart features that hopefully they're going to be patched to work even better in the future. So if you're looking for something on the budget, then go get something like this and spend extra money on maybe a Chromecast. Just don't get a 4K version because there will be absolutely no benefit for a projector like this. So, big thanks to Nexigo for sending me this PJ40 unit uh, for a review. If you're interested, in the description of this video, you're going to find more information about it and some links to support me. And, well, you know what's next. I do not have a posting schedule, so if you're interested in what's going to happen on the channel next, you know how it works. I don't have to explain you that. There's a couple of social media links down below if you want to follow me and start the conversation. So do that and see you there. As for now, thanks so much for watching guys and I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.